The Microsoft Copilot recall feature is a little bit creepy, isn't it? Welcome back to the channel. And here I go again, I'm gonna dive into the huge pool of hate on the internet because I know this is a very polarizing subject, but this is all in fun, so keep your comments nice. Just wanna get some discussion moving around this new feature by Microsoft Copilot. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Okay, so Microsoft's launching this new feature in Copilot or Windows 11, it's called Recall. And what it basically does, and I can read it here, it says it keeps track of everything you see and do on your computer. It actually takes screenshots and lets you go back and search for stuff that you actually did a long time ago. So it's basically watching you at all times, keeping track of every single thing you do, documenting it. And the question is, is this something that we really need or want? We really need to think this through. This reminds me of a classic quote from Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park, right here. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. All right, also full disclosure, I'm a Mac channel. You can see a Mac sitting right here. You've probably watched my channel before, and I kind of take like this cynical approach. It's kind of fun, so let's have some fun with it. But with that said, I use PCs or Windows PCs right here. I have two of them right here. So I'm not attacking Microsoft in this video. In fact, Apple is kind of devising their own little scheme here in WWDC coming out in a couple weeks here. So we're gonna see what they have as well. I'm just gonna talk about it from the standpoint of what does this thing really do and why is it so creepy? I mean, going on 50 years old, you know, I have to question a lot of different things. As you get older, you question a lot more than when you're in 20. When you're 20, things come out, you're like, oh, this is great. But I kind of question things because, I mean, if you look at the human's track record on creating, you know, new technologies and stuff, they don't have the best track record. You know what I'm talking about, right? So overall, we have to question what's the end game with this new technology? And now Microsoft's asking me to trust this guy right here. Why should people trust Microsoft over another company? I think we're at the very early stages of understanding how our relationship with AI agents uh, should be shaped by us primarily because that's the only way to build trust. If and I'm not sure what's more creepy, that guy, the recall feature, or those scary clowns that were kind of popping up all over the news a couple years ago? You tell me. Right, I always ask the question, these companies have to get something out of this. Are they giving this for convenience to us, to make it more convenient for us to search? Or are they actually kind of scraping all this data and then training their AI models a lot more so they can re you know, replace us a little bit better in the future? And if you think I'm crazy about replacing us, training the AI to replace us, think like us, here's an article, I think it's from Fortune Magazine, I'm just gonna show it to you. But this guy is saying that 50% of all jobs are gonna be replaced by 2027. And he's a kind of a CEO of a pretty large company. Now I'm not saying that's gonna be completely true, but when people are starting to say things like this, you really gotta think about what's going on. Either way though, and we're gonna get into more about what this does in a second, but either way, I think recall is totally a creepy kind of you know, it's a creepy kind of feature that they built in, right? It's always kind of watching you over your shoulder like this guy over here, kind of creepy, right? Or this guy even more creepy over here, really creepy, right? Anyways, you get the idea. We're having some fun with this, but do we really trust these two here to make sure that they're looking, you know, that they can take snapshots of all of our data and eventually keep that safe for the long term? We see all these large companies have all these problems. It just comes out, you know, all major companies, data breach, data breach, data breach. Do we really want them controlling now every single action we take? All right, so Microsoft says everything lives on the edge. Take a look at this guy. There could be this reaction from some people that this is pretty creepy. Microsoft is taking screenshots of everything I do. Yeah, I mean, that's why that you can only do it on the edge. I love how they say the edge. It's kind of a word nobody really understands, right? I mean, are they mining the data? Are they not mining the data? Is I know it's on your computer. It lives on your computer. Maybe they can't tie your name to it. But these are questions that always have to be asked because who knows, right? Only the engineers know. Are there back doors like we just found out from other companies? Who knows? All right, actually coming from Microsoft directly, it says right here, it says, for starters, recall is incredibly wide. The scope of it is incredibly wide on what it collects, all right? Think about this. It includes logging things you do in apps, tracking communications. It says uh, tracking communications and live meetings and video calls. So any of your live meetings, video calls, they're gonna be tracked. You can go back and search for people, people's faces, what they're saying, stuff like that. It says remembering all websites you visited and, uh, and then basically any pictures and stuff like that or any information you've researched on the internet if you allow it to, of course, We'll see how long that lasts. So, and then including if you're looking up spreadsheets and stuff on financial data, it's going to have snapshots of that as well. That's super concerning. So think about this for a second. I mean, the email that you sent 
the uh, the handyman, right? Because he fixed the toilet. He kind of threatened him because it leaked the next day. That's in there, and that's going to haunt you for a long, long time. I mean, do we really want these snapshots in time? Just basically, maybe three, four years ago, always to be there. Do we really want some of the things that we've done in the past to follow us around forever? So basically, anything that you ever regretted is going to come back. Remember that spring break three years ago where you took those pictures, you thought they were gone forever? Recall has your back. But then there's also no like really information on how this thing works, all right? And this is the scary thing. I don't even know if Microsoft knows how this AI works because it trains itself. For instance, let's say you give it two pictures of presidents. Let's say you have Obama and Trump, and you ask it, who's the best president? What's the algorithm? Who's going to come up first, right? Who's going to come up second? Who's thinking through that? Is it Microsoft's thought process? Is it yours? Is it you know based on what you've searched? Is it based on what they think you should know? These are things that we have to ask because this is going to be coming more and more mainstream. So how are they going to get the information you're searching for up in the first slot, and who makes that decision? All right, so now we're going to get into some of the real-world stuff. But just before I do that, think one last time, you know, that one kind of maybe week, five, six years ago where you had that infatuation with Mila Kunis on the internet, that's going to come back to haunt you. These are things that are reality of recall. They're going to recall everything, right? It's a joke, but you get the idea. Do we want this and do we want other people to know about this? It's just weird. Okay, now let's just be kind of devil's advocate here. So a lot of people are going to come back to me and say, well, you know, you're being paranoid, right? This AI is coming and, and you can actually turn on and off this feature. And you can for now, but you have to remember to do it, number one. And you also, have, you, can turn, you can tell it specific things not to search. That's documented in there as well. But overall, a lot of people are just going to turn this feature on or it might be even on by default. And it's going to be recording everything that you do, including this financial information, which we'll get into. But these are concerning things. So you got to just remember, obviously right now it's off, but there's some things that are even more concerning we're going to cover right now. So here's the rub, right? So while you can turn it off, maybe you work for a company, and these things are going to be used for companies, Microsoft uh, Office and, and, and PCs and everything else, right? So your company gives you one of these things. Now they require you to have recall on at all times, just like they did. Now, they were always recording you before, right? But now this is to a, another level. So anything you've ever said, every video call you've ever done, every email you've ever sent, every thought you've ever thought, every little thing you've looked up on the internet, they can go back and do a recall on everything. So while you're working and you're having fun, if you don't kind of fit the mold of that company, the shape of the way the vision is that they want to go, and you kind of keep it a, you know, keep it a secret from them, they're going to find out now because they can search for anything in the world that you've ever done, including just looking for like, you know, let's just say, I don't know, you're on Amazon looking for specific products and they may not like that product. Now they can see what you're doing and how you talk to people. Is this what you want for business? All right, so like I said before, people might forget to limit the scope of this. And the big problem that I talked about or touched on before, and I'll talk about why this is true, is let's just say you're, you're searching financial documentation, social security numbers, things on your computer that you have maybe password protected. As soon as you open up on the screen here, it's going to be taking pictures. Recall is going to be taking pictures of that thing. So you can go back and search for it. And then everyone, including people behind you, whenever you search for that stuff, can see it. So you don't have to log back in through a password from, from my understanding. You, you know, obviously you have to get into the computer, which we'll talk about, but you you actually can just recall that and that recall will not really kind of just, you know, remove that information because it thinks it's too sensitive. It's going to be taking that information at all times. All right, coming from Microsoft directly, here it says, it says, Microsoft says that recall doesn't perform content moderation, all right? What does that mean? It won't actively hide sensitive information like passwords or financial account numbers if you, got in, if you go into the info on spreadsheets, for example. So they said this directly from them, and I forgot about passwords. What about the passwords you, you type in constantly? Are those going to be showing up on recall as well? So let's think about this for a second. So let's just assume you're in a coffee shop or something and your computer's on and someone comes by and swipes it, right? So now you have that person with a live computer that's currently on right now and they have access to everything you've ever searched for over the last couple of years, which we'll get into. But over the last couple of years, they can search for all of your financial information, anything that they want, they can go ahead and pull that information up. And is this kind of far-fetched? No, in Chicago all the time, I live around Chicago. In Chicago right now, teens are running around stealing people's phones by gunpoint and making them open up them, uh, their financial apps and stealing their banking information and stealing all their banking account money. This is something that's real. So if someone gets access to your computer like this in a coffee shop, they steal it. Now they have access to anything that you've ever opened up, including all those passwords, all the financial data, everything else that you want nobody else to see that would have been password protected. And then beyond that, what about malware and stuff like that? I mean, that's that maybe that's maybe that the unrealistic way of getting your computer. But if something gets into there, like malware or something, and it can look around, can it go ahead right into recall and then start searching through all those logs as well? 
These are things that we, I mean, we just have to ask the questions, right? I mean, you have to ask the questions. Don't be stupid. You have to ask these questions because Microsoft just wants this feature first, but is this the right thing to do like Jeff Goldblum said? All right, another issue on top of all this is gonna be the, the performance and also your space, all right? It says right here, another issue is gonna be space, but it says Microsoft says the minimum hard drive space that you need is 256 gigabyte, which is their lowest that you wanna have, and 50 gigs must be available, all right? It's also saying here that, it, you know, what does it say here? Three months, we'll use about 25 gigabytes to, to kind of store all this information. So for a full year, that's 100 gigabytes of data that you need. If you only have 256, then you add the operating system, let's just say 50 in applications, you're talking you have very little left. Not only that, you're going to also be using a lot of processing power to be going through this. It's constantly taking snapshots and stuff. So we don't know how this is all going to work. But at the end of the day, it's still taking up a lot of your space. So you can get one year at 100 gigabytes. But if you want it to go way, way back more than a year, you know, two years, three years, you won't even have enough space on the 256 gig model. It's going to take all of your space. So you need to get the one terabyte or the two terabyte version. And again, I wouldn't even get that because I don't want this information, but you can see how this can add up really quickly because these are actually screenshots of everything you've done. So we're gonna kind of get to the end of this, but I mean, here's my, here's my final take on this. Do we really want these companies with these great track records of always protecting our data, right? No. Do we really want them to have access to this or even, even you know, kind of float this feature in front of us? I mean, I got through 50 years of being able to protect my own data. I got through 50 years of being able to look up my own stuff just with searches and I labeled my stuff correctly. I don't need this, right? I mean, what's next with AI? Is it gonna help us wipe ourselves too? I mean, this is the world that we're living in and this is the world that they want. Obviously this trains their models. I, you know, over time, and I don't know if this feature specifically does, but I know for sure they're learning a lot of stuff from us through the whole AI kind of realm here. I mean, all the different things. I think there's different 50 different features built into Copilot. It's learning something from that. Trust me, absolutely it is. So as it learns these things and it kind of replaces us, remember that article, 50% of jobs by 2027? I mean, even if that's not right, what happens in 2035, right? I mean, people keep saying, oh, technology always kind of finds a way. That's another Jurassic Park kind of, you know, kind of quote, right? But this is a little bit different, right? This is a lot different than what we used to have in the past. I mean, there's been the industrial revolution, the internet came out, and the internet's really screwed a lot of things up. Let's think about it. Really, really, it's caused a lot of problems in the world. But this is actually to another level, and this is gonna be something we all have to think about. Do we really want these companies to control this? I mean, there's only gonna be a few of them. They're gonna be picking and choosing what we see based on their algorithms and their training. And can they tweak it, can they not? These are questions that need to be asked because we just don't know. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up. That's my cynical approach to everything. And I know people keep saying you do too much on AI and stuff, but I truly, truly feel that this is gonna be a huge problem coming up. And uh, I think people are just, you know, they're just so acceptant of these companies than saying, oh, I want that feature. It looks, but what is the benefit of it? I mean, just being able to search things on little snapshots and stuff called recall, is that really worth giving up all that freedom or all the security and everything else that comes with it? You gotta really just think it through and we gotta start pushing back as, <laughs> as soon as we can. Otherwise it's gonna be too late. That's the end of it. I hope you guys like these videos. I love kind of talking about these topics and sometimes I ramble on. I promise this will be my last one, like I always say in AI, but it won't. And I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Peace.